oboe. In times of stress, people rise to new heights to meet the challenges. The British awoke to their poor defense system four years before World War II started. Oddly, it wasn't Hitler, but a science fiction movie titled War of the Worlds that aroused the people. As a result, Robert Watson Watt began working on a radar shield four years before the war started. The radar screen he and his team of scientists put together was largely responsible for the victory achieved during the Battle of Britain in 1941. In 1937, Englishman Robert J. Dippy was stimulated to develop an aircraft homing device using an entirely new concept of navigation consisting of a grid system of hyperbolic curves known as G. This novel concept opened a Pandora's box of new aids to navigation utilizing hyperbolic curves generated by radio waves. These involved systems known as Loran A, Loran C, Skywave Loran, Deca, Omega, and a German system known as Hyperball. G was highly effective and accurate as an aid to navigation but it lacked the pinpoint accuracy needed for a bombing attack on a selected target. A British scientist named Alec Reeves rose to the occasion and developed a through-the-clouds bombing technique known as oboe. Although developed in spite of the earthy comments of a few RAF detractors, oboe proved to be the most successful of all such techniques developed during World War II. By mid-1944, the principle of oboe was combined with G, and a blind bombing technique known as GH was developed. Strikes upon difficult to hit targets were made by the RAF and the United States Air Force. As a result, Hitler's war machine was badly crippled by a lack of petroleum products and sorely needed war materials. By modern standards, the technology associated with these novel bombing techniques is ancient history. However, it should be recalled that these techniques were on the cutting edge of the technology more than 60 years ago we have attempted to describe the basic technology utilized in an effort to preserve the historical significance of these contributions. Although the 8th Air Force did not use oboe, they did use GH. However, I will first have to describe operating procedures for oboe because GH worked like oboe only in reverse. Oboe. Under the system called Oboe, directional control of the aircraft was in the hands of operators based at two radio stations in England. These stations were called the Cat and the Mouse stations. The CAT station was responsible for controlling the track of the aircraft on its bombing run. The mouse station signaled when to release the bombs on a pre-selected target. As may be seen in this illustration, the CAT station was located on the coast of England, east and slightly south of London. The mouse station was located on the northeast coast of the Midlands near the town of Cromer. Prior to sending the aircraft on a mission, cartographers measured the distance from the CAT station to the target. The operating range was limited to 300 miles. 
Let us assume the target was Essen, Germany, and the measured distance from the CAT station was 262.22 miles. The pilot was ordered to fly into Germany well north of the target area until he reached the track, an arc of a circle, exactly 262.22 miles east of the CAT station. The RAF Pathfinder crews were sent to a target always at night. These crews received special training and usually flew the fleet twin-engine Mosquito Bomber. Their bomb load consisted only of brilliant marker flares to light up the target. The main fleet of bombers followed and dropped their bombs on the brilliant flares. The aircraft carried a transponder. This is a receiver transmitter that receives the pulse radio signal and instantly transmits it back to the point of origin. The time lapse from the time the signal was sent from the station and returned to the point of origin was measured on an oscilloscope and cathode ray tube at the oboe station. The cat and mouse operator used the leading edge, the left leading edge of the returning pulse blip for time lapse measurements. These measurements were in microseconds or millionths of a second. For this report and the sake of simplicity we will use approximations and say that radio waves travel at a speed of 1,000 feet per microsecond. For example, if the CAT station sent a signal that required 2,769.04 microseconds to reach the aircraft and return, the one-way time required was half this amount or 1,384.52 microseconds. Simply multiply microseconds by 1,000 and find the aircraft was 1,384,520 feet distant from the station. Dividing by 5,280 feet per mile, we find the distance was 262 point twenty two miles, the track line of the target. In addition, the pulse radio signals were audibly transmitted to the pilot. Prior to reaching the track, all he heard was a series of dots, like Morse code dots. When he reached the track line, the dots turned into normal Morse code dashes and the pilot had to turn the aircraft south and follow the track line and the normal dashes. If he went beyond the track line and the normal dash turned into a series of long dashes, longer than the normal Morse code dashes, the pilot knew he was too far away to the left and had to correct back to the right. If he heard a series of dots, he knew he was too far to the right and had to correct to the left. It is my understanding that the electronic geniuses who worked up this system relied upon the length of the transmission time of the pulse signal sent to the plane transponder. A short pulse transmission met a narrow blip on the cathode ray tube. In audio form, it was like a Morse code dot. A normal dash signal produced a normal blip on the cathode ray tube. However, an abnormally long pulse signal produced a wide blip on the screen and an audio signal that told the pilot he had gone beyond the track line. The width of the blip made little difference to the oval operators who always used the left leading edge of the blip as a visual reference point for measurements. 
With practice, pilots were able to follow the track quite easily until they reached the bomb release point. This point was controlled by the mouse station. The mouse operators knew the aircraft was flying at a prescribed altitude. The pilot forwarded his estimated ground speed by radio for final bomb release point calculations by the oboe operator. The bomb trajectory, distance to target, and release point, as well as the distance to the mouse station, were all calculated at the mouse station. In this case, let us assume the bomb release point was calculated at 265.40 miles from the mouse station. Of course, the pulse signal must travel twice this distance or 530.80 miles, or 2,802,624 feet. Assuming radio waves travel at 1,000 feet per microsecond, it will take 2,802.624 microseconds for the round trip to the bomb release point. Accordingly, Mouse operators set the marker blip on the strobe marker scale at 2802.624. The most important part in oboe bombing was to reach the bomb release point on track and with the correct heading. A few minutes prior to reaching the bomb release point, the pilot stopped making minor course corrections to fly the arc of the track circle. He was given a final true course to the bomb release point. It was more important to arrive at the bomb release point on the correct heading than on the track, as a few degrees error in heading results in a large error at the target. The pilot followed that course until the bomb release order was issued by the mouse operator. Although the bombardier was actually 265.4 miles away in England, the bombs were dropped on his signal when the aircraft reached the release point. Accuracy was quite good, even through cloudy skies. As may be seen in these before and after photos of an oboe strike on a railroad marshalling yard, the attack was very effective and completely destroyed the target. The precise nature of the entire operation is awesome. Of course, measurement of the pulse signals to a millionth of a second was a feat by itself. However, there were other considerations as well. For example, in the transponder there was a delay of perhaps 8 or 10 microseconds between receipt of a signal and triggering of the reply signal that had to be allowed for. There was even an allowance of several milliseconds or thousands of a second for normal human response delay after receiving the bomb release order. Following the invasion, cat and mouse stations were established in France and Belgium that placed most of Germany within the 300 miles range of Oboe. The success of Oboe led to development of another similar through the cloud bombing technique. It was called GH. It worked like Oboe only in reverse. The navigator of the aircraft became the operator and the cat and mouse stations were merely transponders.